Hello, everybody. Welcome in. Hello, I am Linda, and this is Carl over here at the controls. We are Colorworks Designs broadcasting to you today from the Colorworks Design House. It's a beautiful Friday, October 2nd. Can you believe it? It's fall. We're going to talk about these quilts right behind us in just a minute, but this is So hello, hello, hello. It is episode number 18 of the Fab Friday Colorworks broadcast here. If you're tuning in late, you can always watch our replays on our Facebook page at Colorworks or at the Colorworks Quilt Along page, or you can go to our Colorworks YouTube channel and also get pinged or dinged whenever we put up a new tutorial and also a new Fab Friday video. So please like and share this video. Enjoy your, uh, invite your friends to come on over and like and share this video and make sure you subscribe to our, our Colorworks YouTube channel too to get the newest tutorials and things like that. So Carl, we're not going to do cactus cam. I should add that right now. Cactus cam is out for the next couple weeks only because they are redoing the golf course. So that means they're reseeding, they're mowing, they're doing other things that I have no idea what they're doing. So um, it's not very interesting out there. In fact, there's really nothing going on in the cactus cam. But it's a beautiful, beautiful day here in the desert. Um, we are still going up to about 105, I think it is, which is um, actually quite mild considering last week's temperature, which was 120. So Carl, who is checking in from Let's where? See. Let's see who's going on. Pat, good morning. Oh, thank you. Pat says, uh, again, in anticipation of a great show. That's very nice of you, Pat. Thank you so much. And hello, Kelly. Oh, thank you, Kelly. These we're going to talk about. These are in the sample sale, and we'll get to that in just a minute. And let's see who else. Hi, Nancy Crandall from Bloomington, Indiana. I hope everything is going well there and the weather is okay. I think you're probably going into a beautiful fall. Um, we can't wait for it out here either. And Julie, good morning from Oceanside to you. Who else? Barbara. Hello, Linda Carl from Granada Hills. Excited to be watching today. Yes, Carl has a very exciting tutorial. I want to I want to just kind of ping that a little bit. He is going to show you how to make this portable ironing board surface, and we called it the portable ironing board surface plus. So we'll get to that in just a minute. Okay. A couple more check-ins. A couple more check-ins. Hello, Kim from Pennsylvania. Thank you for checking in. And who else? Connie. Connie from North Carolina. It's always lovely to have Connie with us. So, and Ibby. Hello, Ibby. You're from Kansas. Wow. Okay. Yes. I know Ibby. Hello, Ibby. Teresa I'm going to be Sanford. seeing you in a couple minutes. And Teresa Martin from Sanford. Well, let's go right into the um, $10 gift card winner because uh, last week the question was, I believe it was, let me see what it was. It was, what was your favorite thread to applique? So if you missed last week, it was, there was, uh, I did bigger or better applique tips and tricks. So if you're looking to improve your machine applique, go check out episode 17 from last week. Um, there's a a tutorial there as well. And the question of the day in order for everybody to enter a comment in to win a chance to win a perhaps a $10 Colorworks gift card was what was your favorite thread to applique with? And this week's winner is... Ah, oh, Teresa Martin, congratulations. We will email you your $10 Colorworks gift card right after the show. So I hope everybody is doing well. I want to start with some big announcements here. So the first one is the Feeling Groovy Quilt Along is in its fourth week. But I wanted to highlight this week's to, uh, blog post because, again, there's a nice little tutorial about paper piecing or foundation piecing. So if you see the picture to my left, if you ever wanted to do paper piecing, go check out the Colorworks blog or the Colorworks YouTube channel and look for the Feeling Groovy week number four tutorial. 
or the tutorial, the video companion tutorial to week number four. And there's a step-by-step -step video there of how to do paper piecing. So these little spiky outer border units are perfect to learn paper piecing, but if you have a paper piecing pattern that you've wanted to jump into and you maybe wanna pick up some extra tips and tricks or you wanna just see what it's all about, maybe you don't know how to paper piece yet, just go check out our tutorial. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial and it also includes some of my better tips and tricks on how to do paper piecing for you. So the next thing I wanna talk about is these quilts right behind me. Okay, Christmas, fall. These, we have been cleaning our closets out. And of course we have been, we have lots and lots and lots of samples. Um, and so I just clicked the button on the website for the, the sample sale to go live. So if you go to our ColorWorks website and under the little tab at the top that says quilts for sale, you're gonna see all the quilts that we have for sale. So let me tell you a couple things. There's one of each quilt, so there's not several of each quilt. Um, most of the default settings are set for a large priority mail shipping. However, we will do our utmost best to get it into a smaller or more cost-effective shipping size for you, and then we'll refund you the difference if that happens. But we don't want to squish quilts up into the smallest box possible. Um, so I want to show you, there's some samples there of some quilts that are up on the website. Um, we Again, we've been cleaning our closets. There are a lot of samples from the Linderella days. And so I'm gonna show you some tidbits and some, and some things that are available here. So of course, when Carl jumps back, there is, there's some mini mod dogs. So we found out that we had, oh, I don't know how many mini mod dogs. So there's this mini mod dog, one of each of these, by the way, this one. So if you've ever wanted to give somebody a mini mod dog, but you don't have time to make one, go ahead. This is up there. The mod cat is up there for sale. Um, I'm going to stand up now. This beautiful little cave tumbler baby quilt is up for sales from the Linderella days. This was something from our shop in uh, Southern Pines, and that is up for sale. So if you need a baby quilt for Christmas, you can certainly buy that and put your tag on it. You're looking at my middle now. Oh, let me sit down. This um, We had lots of spiky table runners. This is a beautiful one that we did for Island Batiks. That is up for sale. This beautiful spiky wall hanging out of Batiks is up for sale. This would be a marvelous tiny little infant baby quilt, or um, you could use this as a little wall hanging. Um, oh, and then we are the row by row. So I told you there was lots of Linderella stuff from the Linderella days. So this was our row by row um, the second year. And you can see that each of the mailboxes are like uh, personalized, the bobbin bunch. Mrs. So-and-so lives here. And then this is the cutters. <laughs> so this was a row by row we did. And of course the singing in the rain row by row, which was really popular. That's up there. Um, this gingerbread table runner from the Linderella days is up there. This is all wool applique, um, really fun. Ragtag and boot tail, another one from the Linderella days. So I'm highlighting for you guys the really the fall and Halloween ones that are up there. There are lots more that are not fall and Halloween. And then of course, this is a, a good one from the Linderella days. Happy Jacks is up there. So this makes a great table topper or a little happy Halloween wall hanging. And then last but not least, there's this nice larger Halloween quilt that's up there. So if you're looking to decorate for fall and you don't want to make anything, or and there's the back of it, stars, orange stars. Somebody's asked you to make something or you just want to grab some fall decoration. Those are all up for sale at the sample sale. And um, we'll be adding a couple more in the next uh, week or so as we get back out and do some more photography and things like that. So that's the sample sale going on. Let me just um, put these all on the floor for a minute because I have to move on to the tutorial in a minute and I've just covered up everything for the tutorial, basically. Okay, anything else going on, Carl, that we need to know yes, about before we go to your exciting tutorial with Carl, who's gonna actually, you're gonna actually see him today but he pre-taped himself, so. Barbara, that's the ironing board promo. Oh, oh, good. Well, let's jump into the ironing board promo because there is a, uh, Carl pre-taped himself, so it's a video tutorial, um, which me, which is nice. So you can always come back and replay this 
and slow it down and things like that. There will be a handout. So you have to give us, Carl did a little handout of supplies and sizes. This will be a PDF download coming up um, within the next hour or so. So it's not there yet in the info of the video, but it'll be uploaded in the next hour or so. So let's talk about this. So Carl came up with the Portable Ironing Board Plus. Let me put that into frame there. So you can see it's kind of, it's thick, and so the idea here was to make a portable ironing board. So if you're out in your camper or you're going like I do, I go from room to room sometimes, or for instance, like now we're going into sample making season here at the Colorworks Design House. So Carl does um, sample making. He does quilt, don't you, Carl? I do. He does. He does quilt. I cut very well and so too. he cuts. So he sometimes needs a portable ironing board where he is down below. I'm upstairs and he's usually down below. And so he made himself this portable ironing board cover with this mod flamingo uh, pa uh, fabric that we picked up when we did our shop hop. And this is from Hoffman Fabrics. And you can see it's like thick, so it's not going to warp if you're using steam or anything like that. And then he decided to like put a um, like what we call the uh, portable ironing board plus. So there's a design wall here with the K flannel, plus you can carry around your cutting board. So let's roll the video and see how Carl made this. So today I want to show you how to make this portable ironing board. I'm going to back up a little bit. It's 24 by 18, good size to travel with, nice and light. Without further ado or not any more delay, let's get on with it. Here we go. Okay, so here we are at the overhead. We're just going to review all the materials we're going to need and tools to make this little mini portable ironing board. The first thing we're going to want to find is our top fabric right here. I'm using this pink flamingo fabric here. It's a very retro for Palm Desert. So that's my top fabric. And then I'm going to need the layer below that's going to be a piece of canvas or duck cloth. Your choice, either or. Does it matter which it is? Then we're going to use some batting. I'm actually using two layers of batting. You could use one, but I like two to get a more cushy effect. And actually this bottom piece is uh, scraps that I've just pieced together. So that's going to be our uh, top surface. And then that's all going to get stapled to our ironing surface board there. So this is a piece of pine board because it's light. Pine is lighter than any other board. So if you're using MDF, uh, it's going to be a bit heavy for you. Plywood tends to be heavy because of all the glue. So look for something in a pine board. Uh, this one was already pre-cut for me. I didn't need to do anything to it. Got it from the local hardware store, uh, Lowe's actually, Home Depot has them too. This is already cut to my size, 24 by 18, so we're going to make a 24 by 18 uh, ironing surface. And again, this is pre-finished, sanded, wrapped in plastic, don't need to do anything to it. Uh, just wrap it. So the other things we're going to need to get along with this project are going to be smooth and stuff like that. But anyway, that's all you need to get going with this project. Like I say, only one of these, not all three. You just need one and one of these. So without further ado, let's move on and let's construct it. There we go. So as you see, we're going to start first of all well, with the two layers of batting first. And uh, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to take, because I'm no good at corners, so I don't even know. So if you've got better ways of doing corners, just go ahead and do it. You don't need to follow my instructions. Anyway, I start by putting a flip this to this corner, make a square. I'm going to flip this piece up. And then we're going to secure that with a staple right there. That's a good noise. Then I'm going to bring this guy up and do exactly the same. Just right there. Now this is where you may need the hammer because the staples might have crossed each other. So you're just going to give it a little tap like that. But there's my corner on that side. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Make There we go. And you don't worry about where these go because they're never going to get seen. So don't measure these. Just do it by eye. So there. So there's the start of our ironing board. That's a nice cushy surface. Now, because it's, it's only bad and we need to protect this a little bit, that's why we're going to use the duck cloth. So the next... Okay. So now we've got a nice ironing surface right there. And you could leave it at that if you wanted to. If you didn't want a fabric on there, you just like the canvas, duck cloth feel to it, 
just go ahead. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is just put the final layer on top of this one. So we'll flip that out. We've got a nice clean surface set, solid. This is not going to warp on you and it's pretty light to travel with. It's also good around the house if you want to get, get extra ironing boards going or you want to be in a room where you don't want to set your ironing board up. This is a great thing to have and a great thing to make. Now the only thing I'm going to do here now, I, I get fussy with all these like little trim bits on the edge. So this is where my tape comes in. There we go. So it's nice and clean on the back. Nice and smooth on the front, ready for an ironing. But wait, I want to show you one more thing because I think we can do better than this on the back. So give me one moment and let's see what we can come up with. We'll see you in a moment. So yes, I did figure out where I can put on the back of here. And what I figured out I would put on the back would be a design wall. I had some of this left over from our cave design wall. Uh, project and this I'm going to make into a backing for this so not only will it be an ironing board it can reverse as a little design wall too so when I need a little one around the house I can just take it and I got it with me so let's see how we're going to make that same principle again I found some mat board this little mat board right here made it the same size as the uh, ironing board itself this is just thin mat board uh, you could use corrugated, uh, but make sure it's not too thick and too thin. So mat board is about a good size because we're going to wrap something around it. And then... There's my ironing board. So the next thing to do is to go bring the board back. Put that up there. Put that up there. That will then get stapled to the back of that board. Just like that. Now there's one more thing I can do with this that I just realized and uh, I'm looking around for it and uh, let's see. I've got some elastic right here and I'm thinking wouldn't it be nice if I put some elastic in there? So. For me, I don't mind these staples being here, but if you are not sure about the staples going in there or you just like things a bit more finished, to me this is a bit more industrial for me because I'm going to knock around with it quite a lot. You could just use some Renaissance ribbons, which are very pretty, and just glue that on the edges over those staples to finish it off, just like that. And then you'd have yourself a nice designer design wall, traveler for rulers and mats, and we'll do that right now, and an ironing board. So there you go. So there's your ruler going in there. Any size ruler, any size mat can go in there, and you're ready to go to your next sewing class, or just move yourself around the house and uh, be ready for any eventual sewing that you may want to do. Primarily, you've got uh, your... Uh, ironing surface. Let's flip it around because get the flamingo the right way up just like that. And if you're really traveling then you want that little Elysio travel lion. Isn't that perfect? It's the right size for that board. This will be getting a lot of use by me. So there you go. That was really great, I think. Don't you think Carl did a great job? I do. I think he did a great job. What do you think, Carl? Yeah. Yay! He did a good job. So we've got it right here. And I did want to show it with the ruler like he had it because this is wonderful. When we start traveling again, whenever that will be, hopefully soon, you can actually travel to classes with your portable ironing board plus so to speak. And so again, I wanted to highlight that there will be a handout coming up soon. Give us about an hour to get that up uh, underneath the info section of the video. 
it's um, basically very elementary. I mean, what you need and the sizes. Now, the other thing I wanted to flash was the board that Carl used. So he found that. Uh, where did you find this, Carl? Lowe's. Lowe's. So this is, um, it's called a edge glue, glued panel, but it's all sanded. It's all smooth, so you don't have to do a thing to it. It's also the perfect size sitting at 24 by 18, and it's really made to make, I guess, your own bookshelf with or something like that. Is that what it is? It's made, it is. You're, it's you're just... supposed to make your own bookshelf? Yeah. So this is from Lowe's. Uh, if you look for that ECMD edge glued panel, um, and then it's 24 by 18. I don't know if there are other there are other, sizes. other sizes. There are. Okay, and I just saw a question from Nancy Crandall there about where can I find that flamingo fabric? Okay, we bought this flamingo fabric. It's from Hoffman Fabrics, and I can't remember the name of the exact um, fabric collection it's in, but we found it in a little shop in, where was that? Um, I want to say it was Beaumont or Redlands when we did the shop hop, but it's from Hoffman Fabrics. So it's um, a really so fun, fun fabric. And it's almost like a, um, it's like a, a, a bark cloth or something like that. Here, oh, the selvage. Uh It is called a little retro vibe by Hoffman Fabrics, a little retro vibe. Oops, oh, so much for live. Can you see that now? A little retro vibe by Hoffman Fabrics. Okay. All right, okay. What else is going on? We've got a couple of more people just checking in here Okay. First. We've got Leah from Canada. Hello, Leah, how are you doing? Thank you for coming from Canada to visit us today. And Dee Dee, hello Dee Dee from North Carolina. Nice to see you. In Georgia, Anna's in Georgia. And Anna in Georgia. Hi Anna. I bet Rincon is that Rincon Beach. I bet is that is that or is that no Rincon Beach is in California. Is there a beach in Rincon, Georgia? I don't know, but that sounds nice. I think. Mary loves I think. Fab Fridays. And Mary, thank you so much for tuning in. We love Fab Fridays too. So this was uh, I'll just throw that again. There's the fabric Carl used from Hoffman. It's called. Um, mm, retro. A little retro vibe by Hoffman Fabrics. Okay. Well, look, we've got, a, oh. we've got another suggestion. What? Love and the ironing board plus. I'm going to put a briefcase. Oh, that's a great perfect. idea. A briefcase handle would be wonderful. That is a wonderful idea. Yeah, so look for the handout. It's coming, you know, in an hour as a PDF, basically. Um, so, and then Mary says, great, on my to-do list, thank you. Yeah, or hubby's to-do list. You know, you can always hand that over to the honey-do list, so to speak, and have him or her make one of those for you. Yeah. Hello from Washaba, Minnesota. Oh, hi, Gail. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so I want to flash some other things before we're out of here. First of all, let me tell you what the question of the week is for this uh, week's entry into the $10 gift card, which we'll announce next week. So this week's question is, what other rooms do you quilt in? Meaning, do you go quilt in the kitchen, in the living room, in your dining room? I mean, I think all of us have a, a, a most of us have a sewing room, I think. Um, but what other qu rooms do you quilt in? And um, that is this week's question for the $10 Colorworks gift card, which we'll announce next week. I wanted to flash some other samples, so go check out our sample sale. This is another one, the Hip Chicks. Uh, so that's up there. Of course, if you're getting ready for Christmas, this little Christmas tree, this was in one of our magazines a long time ago. And then, of course, this little, if you like primitive stuff, this little... Primitive Pillow is up there also on the sample sale. That's just some of the things that are on the sample sale. So please go check it out under colorworks.com. Look up in the upper right-hand corner for the little um, tabs, and you'll see one that says quilts for sale. And then you can go uh, shopping or have uh, relatives go shopping. And like we said, if you buy one, put your label on it. We'll never tell anybody in your family that you didn't make it. Um, that is our promise to you guys. Um, anybody else checking in before we bug out for the weekend? No, I think I blew through everybody. Oh, okay. Quick, All right. Well, please make sure you like and share this video. And we do, 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 do so appreciate everybody showing up today and supporting ColorWorks and um, saying hello and checking in. Make sure that you subscribe to our ColorWorks YouTube channel as well. Um, Carl did a great job with his 
sewing uh, portable ironing board cover plus. That's a mouthful. So it's the portable ironing board cover plus. Um, and you can share that tutorial with friends, family, hubbies to put on their to-do list and all that. We will be back next Friday, October 9th. Halloween fall is in full swing. And next week, I'm going to have a tutorial about precision piecing tips. I think we're always trying to improve our quarter inch seam. And next week, I'm just going to share some tips and tricks to help you improve your quarter inch seam. So until then, happy Colorishes Quilting always. Have a great weekend out there. Be safe, be healthy, be sane, and happy quilting always. Thank you so much for checking in again, you guys. We love you all. Bye-bye. Yeah.